Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the Red Famous Comedy Store main room. Here's Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> For a new episode of Kill Tony, here's Tony Hinchcliffe. Hello, live audience. How are you? Oh, boy, am I excited about tonight. Are you guys excited about tonight? You're at the number one live podcast in the world. All right, cool. I'm excited about this. The great Brian Red Band is here, ladies hey, and Hey, everyone. We're excited about things. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm doing the Monster Energy Outbreak Tour uh, all across the United States of America. That is everywhere. Featuring for me on most of those dates, the great Jeremiah Watkins, who has a brand new t-shirt out of JeremiahWatkins.com. This is mine. Breaking news. I just got this just before the show. This is my official shirt. You can get yours at JeremiahWatkins.com. I know everybody wants one. He is fucking brilliant. Yeah, Ryan J. Uh, e. Belt. Ryan J. E. Belt is here. You're doing Toronto with Sam Tripoli, Ian Edwards, and Dean Del Rey. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's uh, end of July. Also going to Alaska the 7th and 8th. Ooh, And Alaska. we're going to New York this weekend. Yes, we are. We're doing the first ever Kill Tony live in New York City at Skankfest. <laughs> I guess that counts for a yodel. Yeah. Uh, the great Ryan J. E. Belt is here drawing tonight's episode. He drew the official Kill Tony poster. You can get that at RyanJEBelt.com. Oh, it's over there. Yeah. We're shooting 360 degrees tonight, courtesy of our friend Keel Yulberg and friends. Yeah. Keel is here. Uh, lots of cameras going. Hello to everybody on Ustream and everywhere else. Comedians, you guys ready? Yeah. Comedians are ready? Audience, are you ready? Well, then let's meet tonight's guest. If you're a fan of the show, you've seen these two do it before. Last time they were on, it was our one of our favorite road episodes ever, San Francisco. They're back again right before kicking off the honeymoon tour. Let's see how loud this place can get for the great Moshe Kesher and Natasha Leggero. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes two of us. Yeah, yeah. The great Moshe Kesher, the powerful destroyer, Natasha Legero. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks, Tony. How you doing? Great to be here. <laughs> Natasha, we always love having you. Moshe, you're in the middle of problematic right now. I'm at the. I, we're done with the season one. We are. We have taped all of our episodes. You've taped your episodes. Yeah. Thank you. Season finale is. It already happened. Oh, okie dokie. Uh, go back and watch it. Yeah. I if can you tell did. you did, Tony. Thank <laughs> you for your support. <laughs> oh, boy. But I'm excited for your guys' Hollywood tour kicking off July 19th. Yeah, right? the honeymoon tour kicks off July 19th. We start in New Orleans, and we're going all over the place. Miami, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Montreal. Chicago, and Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Ooh, yeah, sweet, sweet Milwaukee. Um, I'm excited that you guys are back. Last time you were on with San Francisco, we had so much fun. Uh, we even had part of the band in San Francisco. You guys like uh, the funniest comedy band in the world? <laughs> I know I do. Here they are. It's the Kill Tony Band. In full effect, Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, and Joel Berg. Joel Jimenez. Every week, they do different characters. You never know what it's going to be. And they try to commit to it throughout the episode. It's the Kill Tony Band. <laughs> wow. It's <laughs> a very visual joke for a podcast. They're mechanics tonight, it appears. I do believe just regular car mechanics. <laughs> Wait, the band just dances to songs that are hits? <laughs> <laughs> do they use the instruments ever? The, yeah, they do eventually. That's oh, their big uh, okay. that's their big intro. Put your hands together for your mechanics. It's the Kill Tony Band. <laughs> fixing the mic stand with that wrench. It's really working. Hey, look, Josh Martin's playing guitar tonight, it appears. I'm going to rock out with my cock out. Oh, wow. There he is, Josh Martin right there, everybody, the real mythical creature. You've heard of him numerous times. Um, Band, how you guys doing? You been fixing cars or something? You guys mechanics or... Uh... To the listener at home, there's some funny shit happening on stage <laughs> right now. There's a wrench and uh, what appears to be a poor Mario and Luigi. Hey, how's it going, Tony? Mechanics? Am I right? Am I getting that right? Oh, you're right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's Josh Adam Myers. It's the goddamn comedy jam. <laughs> hey, y'all. How's everybody doing tonight? You guys good? What's going on? 
Joel Berg, uh, looking good back there. How are you? Ready to go? Happy to be here, Tony. Uh, you, you sound like you normally do. No character switch there. Uh, Okie dokie. Yeah, that's cool. They were like, all right, here's the concept. Yeah. We come out as mechanics. Two of us will do an unbelievably bad New York accent. Yeah. And Joe Berg, you just stay, use your regular voice. Do your yeah. regular thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Moshe Kasha. <laughs> That's right, Moshe. <laughs> All right. Everything is in its place. Are you ready to start the show? You guys know how it works. This bucket right here is filled with the names of comedians. Sometimes it's people starting out for the first time. Sometimes it's completely insane people that just sign up for random things out front on the patio. When you, If your name gets pulled out of the bucket, you signed up, and I call your name. You come up here, you do 60 seconds of trying to entertain us. You know your time's up at the, when you hear the sound of a kitty. That 60 seconds, wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. There it is. There it, is. There it was. There you guys so ready? many animals in that. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to start the show or what? Your first comedian performing an un uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Miranda Lensky. Here we go. And it has begun. Being a theater major makes role playing in the bedroom a little more work than play, I should say. Whenever my boyfriend wants to role play, I'm like, of course, baby. Did you do your vocal warm ups like I taught you? Let's do them now. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Very good. Diction Sally sells sex down by the seashore. Again, really need you to project for me. Sally doesn't have a father down by the seashore. I play the role of Sally. <laughs> I like to give notes after a performance. I'm always like, babe, I really need you more on your character study. Like, why do you think your character wants to punish and spank and choke and spit on my character? The audience really needs to see that. Also, you were stage left that last line. I won't repeat myself again. Remember the blocking? We're all calling the understudy. Thank you. Wow. There you go. One minute for Miranda Lenski. You have all the punchlines of a theater major. <laughs> I would say save it for the stage, but oi. <laughs> uh, how long have you been doing stand-up, Miranda? About a year and a half. <laughs> This music follows you around everywhere you go. Everywhere I go, and the red carpet. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> All in L.A.? No, I just moved here from Florida. What you... part of... <laughs> no, you can't. That music doesn't play in Florida. <laughs> they don't have that music. Hey, I there. got a question, Miranda. Ew. You drive a car? <laughs> yes. Can I... Can I look under the hood? Yes. No further question. <laughs> this show has become something different no, from the last time I was not, here. It's not. It's Red Band didn't smoke sound enough weed before the show. show. <laughs> no. I would Some like to say that I weed. thought Miranda had very good presence, and also she was very confident, and I saw her really making an effort to connect with the crowd. <laughs> I would like to say I didn't enjoy your set. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's just a he said, she said. It's a classic. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm just kidding. That was, it just was the time for me to say that. I didn't. I mean, I genuinely didn't. But also, no, I did. I was fine. You just moved here from Florida. How long have you been here? Three months. Three months. You uh, live by yourself? No, I live with, uh, I've, been, I've been on the show one time, so I feel like I'm repeating a lot. It's okay. I, uh, Nobody yeah, I remembers. Yeah, no one remembers. <laughs> My parents listen. Uh, yeah, I live with four other boys. We all moved out here from Florida. We went to college together. We do sketch, improv, and stand-up. Okay. I would try to like have the subject matter go beyond that though, like sketch and theater, right? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Right now I'm serving and working at a restaurant. Ooh, where are you serving at? Central Grill. Oh, I love Central Grill. Central Grill. You're <laughs> you're not, no, I do. I used to fuck with Eastern and Western Grill, but now I'm right down the middle. <laughs> Central. I like it. Uh where is Central Grill? It it's in Glendale. It's right between the hood and the axle of the car. Right, uh, if you look straight <laughs> down the middle, that's where the Cinder Grill is. 
This is why Jeremiah Watkins is Jeremiah Watkins. Somehow is able to make a genuine mechanic joke. Fear, fear fucking freaky, dude. <laughs> Central Grill. <laughs> mm. I actually liked the first joke. I thought the first joke was good uh, where you say, where it was, uh, I play the role of, of uh, what was it? Sally. Sally. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was, that was technically a funny joke. Technically, thank yeah. you. I'll take it. It's a technical joke. No, it was, you know. Uh, but I thought maybe the father thing, you know, there was, uh, I wanted, it should have been darker maybe, you know. Ra raped by her father. Were you raped by your father? Um. You're from Florida. I'll take I that as a yes. So. <laughs> What's it like living with four guys? Now you've been in it for three months. They're all from Florida too. You're living with four male Floridians. What's yeah. the What's the deal with yeah, that? What's the face to eating ratio? <laughs> I was gonna say it's a lot of sex. Uh, no, it's awesome. They're They're some of my best friends. We all met in college. We all made this plan years ago to move out here. And uh, become stand-up comedians? Um, I'm actually, I think out of all of them, I'm the one who's, that's probably more my priority. Um, the sketch and improv and, uh, yeah, just like being, collaborating, being together. The orgies. Stand-up's not that collaborative, though. Are you ready to? No. Well, that's actually something that I like about it is that you don't have to count on other people. And it's kind of like if you just want to go do stand-up, you can just go do you can just go do stand up. Or, like you can do it any time of the night. I think you really could have used the help of your friends and up for here this, uh, uh, tonight. <laughs> but it's good that you're doing that. You get up a lot. You you taking it seriously? I'm yeah, I'm trying to. I'm try It's hard fi figuring out. It's like a lot of trial and error figuring out what mics are like going to be worth it. The track and is there something that surprises you about LA? You've been here for three months. You're a newbie, but you're right there. You've been here long enough to where you sort of. Have absorbed it a little bit is there something that surprises you is it different than you thought it would be yeah in what um, way there's it's uh i don't <laughs> i feel like it's not the mics the talent here i thought was i was going to be like blown <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of hacks i'll say that there's garbage comedians <laughs> primarily garbage i love it you're already hating on other comedians know, and you just did a punch awesome. punch lineless 60 <laughs> seconds <laughs> It's like, well, I'm really surprised how much all these people suck. Well, you don't know what comedy's like in Florida. Maybe that's what comedy is. They're like, I come to L.A., it's like all these set-up, punchline, set-up, punchline. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm here for comedy. Let's talk the theater. <laughs> I thought I thought there was I thought I thought the yeah. Sam thing was a punchline. Yeah. The what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I'm just Sally. I'm just uh just busting your busting Labia. your chops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Art plugs. So that's for real though. The thing that you're surprised about is how bad the comedians are here. Not that they're not bad. It's just like I've been here and I've seen people get up who have never done it before, oh. and I'm just like, what are you doing? What do you right. think? When you're out at those mics, uh, when it comes to this week, we've had a uh, we've we had an interesting uh, you know. Uh, uh, Eliza Schlesinger situation. Now you're out there on the actual open mic scene. Uh, do you notice that a lot of women are talking about their pussies a lot? Um, I'd say the ratio. Do you have a World War II joke? Do, no, I don't. Not do you, yet. It's in the works. It's in my book. No, I think the ratio is about the same for men who talk about their dicks. Do you have a pussy See, the joke? thing about me is I talk about my dick and other women's pussies. That's the thing that I do. And that's do, do you have a pussy joke? Um, not, not, not like many. That's out. No, not, that's not one oh, I can oh, think of. Do you have a pussy, like, one act play? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> do you, you have a lot of vagina jokes, though, not I pussy jokes. I have a period jokes. joke. <laughs> I said my period one last time. Well, um, that's a vagina joke. That's a vagina, okay, then yes. Mm -hmm. So I it's do, the same as pussy, you just don't call it a pussy. I feel like it's, mine it's are a, vagina it's a, jokes it, are tasteful. It's a period piece. It's a period piece, yes. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Well, Miranda, you did 60 seconds, and we talked to you about that, and that's how this show goes. Anything else? Can I? Oh, me. Me. Can I? Wait, what is it? I just want to, uh, my boyfriend and I, who, he lives in Florida, he also does stand up. We just watched clips from your honeymoon tour, and he, I was just telling him, I was like, oh, I hope I get on tonight, and I can see them. Oh, I, I like saying, you. Oh, that's okay. how. It turns now, out I think you. you're great. <laughs> no, did you know you. about either Moshe uh, or me when you lived in Florida? Yes, yeah. Okay. My uh, boyfriend read your book. And then I borrowed it, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you moved to LA. The last part. Like, I mean, you'll have plenty of time to read it at those o open mics where you're getting bored by the other yeah, comedians yeah. in the but back. Like, this guy's a real track. comic. <laughs> well, there she goes, Miranda Linsky, everybody. She's on Twitter at Miranda Linsky, L-E-N-S-K-Y. 
and that is how it motherfucking goes. I can't believe Jeremiah can play saxophone. He's really talented. Jeremiah, are you, are you surprised? Are you surprised that Natasha's surprised? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. It's been a long time since we've had this guy on this stage. Put your hands together for Brett Banta. Tony, 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 Tony. He had to go. Hey, Tony, Tony. He had to go. He what? apologized before the show to me. I did not deliver the message. Now I'm the bad guy. <laughs> now I'm the bad guy. I wasted everybody's time, okay? I apologize. I might have uh, messed up here. I like that you delivered that in character, though. That was cool. Man, you're really throwing a wrench into our show, Jeremiah. <laughs> I pulled yet another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Johnny C. From deep in the back. So, uh, my parents are still together? I know. My parents have actually been together since my mom was 12. Aww, cute. My dad's the only man my mom's ever even kissed. Aww, soulmates. My parents have been together since my mom was 12 and my dad was 18. Aww, molester. My dad's been child molesting my mom for 47 years. It's the longest case in history. Continues to this day with no investigation. My mom was 15 when she got pregnant with me. 15's too young. Even MTV thinks 15 is too young. 15 and pregnant? What are we, fucking psychopaths? The day I was conceived, my mom rode her bike home. Wow, Johnny C. Wow. I don't remember much about your last time, but I remember it not going that well. Am I correct? I mean, that was better. Yeah, that was definitely better. How many pit bulls do you own? <laughs> that's rude. Tony, that's rude. That's rude. When did you first learn to do a fade, though? Seriously. <laughs> do you set a trombone down while you get the tattoo? Yeah, why do you look like you're part of the mechanic band? <laughs> Johnny C, remind me, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I, you know what? I got reminded that I should not speak about what I do for work. Like, oh, he's a cherry popping daddy. No, That's right. I, uh, Actually, your father was a cherry popping daddy, I think. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. No, I. Uh, you got I, reminded by what? You're definitely by, by not boss. lawyer. Yeah, exactly. I work. Uh, I work for a friend of mine. <laughs> you, what? <laughs> I work. He's for a, friend a friend of, of ours, I guess. <laughs> You were, oh, you work for a friend of yours. Yeah, I work right. for a rich guy. Wait, uh -huh. so what happened, when did your parents tell you that, that, and which parent told you that they were the, you know, that it was inappropriate? And... Well, as soon as I could do math, I figured it out. <laughs> so last week? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh really? Can't. Is right, that the I'm mean upset. one? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guy covered in tattoos. Usually, is that who you go to to figure out your 20% of your bill, you fuckheads? All right. Johnny well, C. it's weird because it's not that many years apart, so it is kind of a hard. But it's a big. Now it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. No, it definitely does. A hundred percent. No, no, I like mean, a... no, they're both now, in their sixties. Oh, now, them now, now for it's sure. It's not that big of a deal. The, yeah, it shrinks as you get older. Oh, you start doing mad. Wait, well, he's how old? Yeah, the statute of yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, think about being eighteen years old and you're dating a twelve-year-old. Think about how fucking lucky an eighteen-year-old you are. Right. That's, you know, that's, that's so super cool. tight, pussy. <laughs> My mom was also five nine with giant boobs when she was twelve. So. Oh, really? That's a cool mom. Yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> she told my dad she was sixteen. You know. Girl. What do you do? How long before your, your dad uh, stuck his uh, thing in the tailpipe? You know what I'm saying to people. <laughs> <laughs> do you happen to know, did your dad ever butt fuck your mom? I, I don't know that for sure. I assume so. They've been together for 40 seconds. How do you think he was conceived? <laughs> I don't think that's how babies are made, Mechanic Jeremiah. <laughs> no, when you're young, they're kind of, they haven't fused fully, so you can do it that way. Now, John, this is, I see... 
I see that um, I see I see that you have the name John on one hand of Knuckles and Terry on the other. Are you yeah. still with Terry? It's my parents' names. Are you still with them though? Yeah, I'm still with. Them. So do you use John or Terry? Oh, that's <laughs> my, that's oh that's yeah, that's, that's cool. Life. No, when he's drinking <laughs> off the gay porn, it's yeah. John. Oh, it's and when it's gay porn, it's when, Terry. It, when it's when it's a transgender porn, it's. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> gonna think that. I, I, that. That thought has never crossed my mind. Honestly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Terry likes to go in the butt once in a uh, while, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, you have a tattoo on the fucking palm of your hand. Yeah, what that is that? Sucked. That's a rose. That sucked. Why? Which one hurt the most? That, out of that, that's, the palm? It's not even, there's not even a comparison. Why did you do that? Because Look, it looks cool. cool as fuck. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. Also, you can give somebody a high five and give them a tattoo. Ah, I didn't know that's how it worked. John, well, are you... I think you have a really good look, and I think that you had some good jokes. I didn't love the first one. It felt like, because it felt like you could have made that joke a Quick, little better. Economical. Yeah, like I think everyone wanted it to be really great, and then people were a little let down. Does that mean? I think when no, the Are we supposed to just be being rude, or what's happening? Like, No, you're killing it. You're doing great. <laughs> Because I feel like I want to help people, yeah. but also... Yeah, it's I feel like I want to fuck a 12-year-old. That's my primary <laughs> it's a balance take away from this set. Johnny, do you have a girlfriend right now? I do not. Well, why is that? What's your, what happened? Uh, they don't make them young as they used to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I moved for... I was, I'm from here, and I moved for a few years. To where? I moved to Minnesota. But they don't have girlfriends. No, no, no and then I came back, so... How long have you been back? Uh, just over two years. You've been on any dates lately or anything? You like know that? what? No. Why? I, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Last date you went on? The last date I went on. Oh, God damn it! This girl, she hypnotized me. It was a girl that I met that I oh, knew no. was trouble, and I said I want nothing to do with you. Where'd you meet her at? At work. You know, just 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 hot as fuck and covered in tattoos, and just you're into you're into chicks that are covered. No, in. I hate them. I hate girls with tattoos. Hey. How many years have you been in AA? None. <laughs> I still I'm I'm not there yet. So you pr you saw this chick covered in tattoos, and you're like I I don't want to fuck like, her. Go away, please. So then what happened? We worked together, and eventually she just wore me down. Ooh, with that job you won't tell us about? No, before that. Um, what was that job? I worked at a, a, a dispensary. Stop fixing Sorry, the mic stand. You're not, there's nothing left to fix. I don't I know worked, what you're it keeps twisting. Going down. I Jeremiah, no, down. it's okay. John, John. Jeremiah's got it. He's got. Jeremiah's got it. Thank you, Jeremiah. Now it's good. <laughs> So what happened? I was working at a dispensary. Oh. And so just hanging out all day. That was like the least surprising plot twist right? ever. I worked at a tattoo shop before that. Okay, so cool. I got full of surprises. Mm. But he's good because he likes to make fun of himself. Yeah. And that's a good quality in a comedian. Yeah, totally. It's also kind of cool that your dad, like, he's he found a way to fuck a 12-year-old in the only socially acceptable way that there is. Like, now they're married for 50 years. Right, what are you going to say? He's like a good guy, you know, in a weird way. But he was once a really, really, really bad so guy. The ends the that's do not justify the means. That is, you're, the, you're the ends, and you justify I, I told I said, you guys, kids, they're psychopaths. Jeremiah, do you have that uh, Woody Allen wrench? Exactly. <laughs> also, how long is your drive from Long Beach? Johnny, what do you uh, do? I'm from Hawthorne, thank you very much. Close enough. All right, moving what, on. What do you do for fun when you're not doing stand-up and you're not at work? What's like a hobby of yours? Besides getting high and wrestling. And, and wrestling? Did you say wrestling? wrestling? Yeah. Of course. Are you gonna, really? Are you going to yeah. say that under your breath? Oh, I don't really have any hobbies except Whoa. getting high and going wrestling in the woods. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a regular old guy. My mom was 12 when she got pregnant with me. I wrestle bears in the woods while getting tattooed and fucking the mafia. You're the most interesting dude here. What kind of wrestling? Like traditional, Greco-Roman, silly style? Pro wrestling. Yeah. Who's your favorite pro wrestler right now? Currently? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to beat Kevin Owens. <laughs> All right. He killed himself last night. Yes, he did. At Money in the Bank. Killed I, himself. I watch pro wrestling as well. <laughs> Um, anything else, Johnny? Anything else you want to say? Uh, no. There he goes. Wait. Are, you, are you getting up a lot, though? 
I'm trying, you know, like it's. You got to try harder. No, no, for sure. I'm getting up. Yeah, I'm you got to go like five times a week. No, no, no. I'm, I aim for 10 a week. Is oh, what Jesus. Oh, never mind. You're, you're doing Jesus good. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you aim for 10 a week? Yeah, I try to do Jesus 10. Christ. You're doing it. There you go. How old are you, Johnny? I'm 42. Uh, you oh, perfect time to start. There yep. you go. You're in the pocket, baby. <laughs> you have the whole world in the palm of your hands. That's Tattooed, right. literally. Uh, there he goes, Johnny C, everybody. He's on Twitter. At that Dodo Johnny. That that Dude Johnny. C. That Dude Johnny C. J-O-H-N-N-Y. The letter C. Fuck yeah. Hey, stop seating people over here. Josh should have told you not to see people over there. And if any of those people that are hidden behind the band want to move back to the middle of the showroom where you can actually see the show, uh, that, that's, you're totally allowed to do that. If you're stuck behind the band. Or if you like it, you can stay. But if you want, you can move over there. Pat stop seating people ass. over there. Use common sense, door guy. You guys ready to keep this show going? Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do it all. Principal Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Put your hands together for Eric Mack. <laughs> Woo! Here he comes. That's not him. Mm. Tony, I apologize. He came up to me before the beginning <laughs> of the show. And he told me he wasn't going to be here. Now I'm the big guy. <laughs> oh, I thought you said the door guy came up to you. He's like, should I seat him over there? That too. He's really not here? He's really not here? Oh, no, no, no. Blacklisted. Eric Mack, not here, right? I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Uncle Ron. Is Uncle Ron here? Wow. A lot of sign-up no-shows. Blacklisted. Going. This is exciting. Oh, here he comes. Uncle Ron, come on up. He's shaking everybody's hand on his way up. The first ever time that's ever happened on this show. He's high-fiving the other comedians that didn't get up. Hello, Uncle Ron. He's wearing two dress shirts, two collar dress shirts. He's literally... <laughs> He's still approaching the mic. Okay, who was that first... Guy with the guitar was is it was it you? It was you? That was great. Uh, you, you, I, I'm I'm unprepared, but I heard you had unprotected sex. Maybe. Wait, I I had I had un, un, This is totally unprepared. So I had, I had un, un, wait unprotected sex. Last weekend with two dogs, two dogs, they were having unprotected sex, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I was just watching. I, I, don't, I didn't know where I was going to go with that, but I thought that was great. That, okay, um, wait, uh, let me tell you a story about the time that I ran on the field at Yankee Stadium. Uh, <laughs> It's funny. I guess it's funny. It's true. I did it. I'd never do it again because they fucking beat the living shit out of you, the cops. So don't run on the field at Yankee Stadium. But uh, I got 10 seconds. Um, no, that's the full minute. But if you, you want to do another 10 seconds? I want to hear the story. I'll let you go. Go ahead, Uncle Ron. Extension. I'll let you go. Extension granted. Go ahead, Uncle Ron. You have 10 seconds left Ten. Oh, to live. Okay. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, wait, um, oh, I went in the bathroom at Caesar's Palace last night. I'm, I'm a dealer on the strip, and the sign said, this is an old joke, uh, the sign said, uh, I took a piss, and the sign on the mirror said, employees must wash hands. I waited in, in there for an hour for an employee to come in and wash my hands. Oh, Uncle Ron, there you go. <laughs> Uncle Ron! Coming up, how did, we, how did we get back to 20-second stingers again, guys? Come on. That's uh, 20 seconds. No, not you, Uncle Ron. That was very impressive, first of all. Let me tell you this. You came up 
completely unplanned, unprepared. You made, you made it very aware that you had nothing prepared, and somehow you did a hundred times better than the girl with an improv sketch background. She was bad. She was bad. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. Course of truth. Wow. I mean, I like how uh, I've never seen in my comedy career, not I, in, at Open, at, at, at Kill Tony, in all of comedy, I've never seen a walk-on stage swagger like you had. I mean, it I'm was talking a, every great comedian I've ever seen yep. is more timid and less confident than you getting on stage. And you're just like, oh, thanks the band. Which one of you, I got a minute? Okay, let me just start with a little bit of crowd work. Which one of you band people was talking about unprotected sex? That reminds me of a bit. I watched two dogs fuck. And it was so confident. And then when you said you were unprepared, I was like, that's, that's what you should do. You focus everything on your walk up. Fuck your act. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who cares about an act? The Whoa. momentum begins on the walk up. And you built a wave and you rode it the entire way through. I just wish that was a late night set like Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk on Johnny, Ed, baby. So uh, uh, I watch dogs fuck. That's all I got. You guys have been great. Oh, wait, I went to the Yankee Stadium once. And, uh, <laughs> and here's Yankees. a joke that Jerry Lewis wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ron, also considering first impressions, I did notice and I took note that you are, for the first, another first that I've never seen anywhere in my life, you are genuinely wearing two collared shirts at the same time. Yeah. That's not an undershirt. That is an also, overshirt. This, this used to be a long sleeve shirt, and he has cut it off. Oh, you so. did cut yeah. it. Wow. And you, also, there's a lot of stains I, on his yeah, pants. Yes, Ron, there are. Also, Ron, give Numerous. my wife about two feet of personal space, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Somebody hand me one of those wrenches. <laughs> Uncle Ron, grab the, the stains right here, honey. What That's what I was oh, staring at. God, what is you said into the mic? Uncle That's Ron. from the dogs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joe Berg. Whoa, Tommy whoa, Lee Jones whoa. has yeah, all his <laughs> money. <laughs> now he's showing everybody how many hundred dollar bills he has. Hey, so if anybody wants to knock out an old man and rob him, here's your guy. But right before you knock him out, you got to walk up to him. Shake his hand. I love your work, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Men in black. Uncle Ron, grab that microphone. Did you forget where you were, Uncle Ron? You drive two Toyotas. You two drive two Toyotas. Toyotas. He just pulled out. Wait, he just. Okay, guys, just for you at home. <laughs> he just pulled out a thousand dollars in cash, a fat stack of yeah. hundreds, and then to to try to cap that, he pulled out two Toyota keys. <laughs> at the same As if time. That's better than a big stack. I drive Toyotas, baby. <laughs> At the same time, and one and of these, one of these came out too. I, <laughs> I haven't seen a thick rubber band like this uh, in a while. Tony, an, an extremely any... dirty Jeez. rubber band also fell out of his pocket when hey, he pulled why the you keys empty out. Empty out those pockets. Let's see what else. Is Wait, oh, he's, he's pulling out. Oh, oh, your socks have holes in them. Get ready to run. Oh, it's oh, rubber he's bands. Got a, umbra, he's got a. <laughs> no, the the rubber bands are holding up his socks. Is, is that for heroin? Wait, Ron, you got to use the mic so we know what's going oh, on. Oh well, shit. Yeah, that's my main word. Can what? you say that? What? Yeah, you, Are you allowed to say that. Hey, yes. you know what? You yeah. invented the word. You might as well say it. <laughs> Wait, how? Why do you have so much money in your pocket? To bet horses. Hundred percent believable. <laughs> yeah, I believe right? it. Less less surprising than that the other guy worked at a dispensary. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure you want to spend all that money on horses? Don't I, go to the betting I, we place. We feed the horses. When we bet on the horses, somebody's got to feed them. Hey. We lose a lot of money on T the horses. Tony. And we feed the horses. Who's going to feed the horses? He's trying to get enough money to buy another Toyota. <laughs> just Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. Just for all the podcast listeners, this guy's so weird. Mystery Dan just walked out. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, my God. He really did. He was over there. I saw him earlier. Hey. Hey, who seated these guys over here behind the band? Wow, Uncle Ron's oh. on my side. Thank you. These fucking door guys have no common sense, and you're wearing two dress shirts at once. That's how stupid you guys are. This Uncle fucking guy's got nut stains on his pants. He's got two Toyotas. <laughs> He's like, I, I He's like what the fuck are these door guys thinking? Yeah, he like... He, like, brushes the cardboard box off of him in Skid Row downtown and is like, I could do a better job than that door guy. Wait, Ron, have you, Uncle Ron, have you done comedy before? You've uh, done it on this show yeah, before, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I was, right? I, I was on here like, 
three months ago. You're, you live in Vegas, right? Huh? You live in Vegas, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm you a, should I'm not be in Vegas. Oh, you're a in dealer. Vegas. That's you're right. Currently, strip. You're currently a you're dealer. You're a car dealer in Vegas? You're a fucking uh, strip dealer. Really? On the strip. Boy, so they I'm wait. Do they let you live in the van in the parking lot there, or do you have to park it off site? Yeah, the van. Yeah, I have to bring the van. I don't me. believe. I don't believe I don't you. On the strip. On the strip. Which Paris, which casino? Paris and Valleys. I'm a, I'm a, I know what a hundred dollar. Uh, Harris and Valleys. Harris and oh, Paris. Oh, Harris. Paris. And Bally's, if you want to come oh, see Oh, you me, work at the I'll let you win. Okay. Anybody comes. No, I can see why like they would hire you at Well, wow, this guy's got an Paris. ace up both of his sleeves. <laughs> I mean, I'm not coming to see this guy. He doesn't even drive an American car. Oh, come on. <laughs> Uncle Ron, you are an incredible character. What do you think the weirdest thing about you is? What's the weirdest thing that you do? Like a thing which you're like, man, I hope nobody ever finds out about this. Okay. Hey, I, it's like I fucked the last comedian's mom when I, she was 11. Flash. I do a little bit of cocaine. Not much. <laughs> what? 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 Oh, oh, no. Oh, He's no. getting a standing ovation. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, man. I've never. <laughs> this guy really wants to do it with you. I've never done cocaine once in my life, but I feel like I would try it with you, Uncle Ron. It sounds safe. I feel like nothing can go wrong. You have a lot of Toyota keys to do it off of, too. So. <laughs> One for each and nostril. He and he knows the original recipe. It's really good. Tony, it's not coke. It's not coke. It's just all his friends that have been cremated. Solberg. Listen to that. Wow. Powerful. Oh, that's Solberg's music. It goes along with that. <laughs> talk to these two guys. Oh, you want to try to roast me a little bit? <laughs> yeah, you, I saw you the last time you were on. Uh-huh. Uh, we watched you last night. Uh, the dogs and me. Uh, okay. You. I remember I'm, that joke. I, you, know, you were on about, what, six months ago or so? Nine on, months. Yeah, on, yeah, San Francisco. Nine you nine actually months. have a very good memory. Nine months ago, you had a baby, right? She had a baby? No, but that no. is the gestation period for a baby, yeah. so you're in the zone. <laughs> you're all right. Yeah. You're at about, Uncle Ron, looks like you're at about, what, eight right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the cocaine is. <laughs> He's got a coke belly. <laughs> <laughs> this, now you can joke about it, but this is not fat. It's an operation I had. I was dying. Oh, ago. Ron, why do you do this to us? Hospital. We were having so much fun Ron. Mo mocking Uncle you Ron. Uncle Ron, why do you look exactly like Mel Brooks from Spaceballs? <laughs> Mel Brooks. Uh, what was the operation? Yeah. yeah. No, it's Tommy Lee Jones, man, from yeah. Men in Black. Yeah. How about what Tommy was the operation? Uh, stop, stop, stop. Uncle Ron, what was the operation? It was a ruptured appendix and open heart surgery. At the same time? At the same time. Five oh, Coke's pass. good for that. Yeah, Coke's really good for that. <laughs> so you're lucky to be alive. Uh, it's a miracle of science. I thank all the EMTs, all the nurses, all the... I, I tried to get a sponge bath. Oh, that's who he thought I, I, I hands figured. he was shaking on his way up. He, he thought they were all doctors and nurses who had saved his life. <laughs> uh, it's a miracle. I mean, I, well, they, I'll tell you this, Uncle Ron. All the intestines out, put them back together. It's a miracle. You, you, yeah. think, you think that's what they did? They well, took they, they took all of your intestines out and then and put them back put together. Only half of them back. And wow, that's crazy. Half. Your appendix really it's exploded. Because you know it exploded. Yeah. It was like the doctor told my girlfriend, uh, you know the dog. He told <laughs> told my girlfriend, uh, twenty more minutes I would have been dead. Wow, that's about how long it took you to get on stage. So I mean, just think. Uncle Ron, what kind of dogs do you have? Well, Irish setters, if anybody knows, and I bet nobody knows. Irish water spaniels, a very w rare breed. Oh, uh, they have big dicks. Big dick. Is it which one did the big dicks? You, All right. You really okay. have Uncle dicks. Ron. Uncle Ron. Put that mic back in the mic stand. Mike. He thinks we're ventriloquists and we're throwing <laughs> our voices. Uncle Ron, look at me. 
Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're very, very awesome. Quite the character. Glad you're alive. Thank you. There he goes. Thank Uncle Ron, ladies service. and gentlemen. He does cocaine sometimes. <laughs> so great. Be very careful, Uncle Ron. There's, you're right next to a staircase. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, re I remember Uncle Ron. I remember Uncle Ron very, very clearly. Because the last time he was on our show, we found out that he drove all the way from Las Vegas with somebody. And when I say somebody, I, I mean what many Kill Tony fans would consider the biggest, most popular guest in our history. Bum, We've had bum. many, many fun, memorable characters. Your Mystery Dan's, your Aphrodite, who is here in person right over here. So many fun people get pulled out of this bucket, but nobody hit us quite the way that this next comedian did. Here tonight, all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, I give you the one, the only, Ichabod! Here he comes. Hi, my name is Zikabot. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here on the, on the most watched live video stream podcast in the history of the universe. Uh, you have real life legendary comedians giving you feedback. Like, like my feedback, apparently I'm creepy. I, I didn't know. I had no idea. But thinking back now, I really did have a lot of awkward moments in my life. Yeah, like one time I was riding along with some friends and we got pulled over by the police. Yeah. That minute yeah. goes pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ichabod. You got pulled over by the police and what? Yeah, it was crazy. And the two cops are walking up behind the car, you know, and one cop says, the other cop, watch the creepy guy. And I said, oh. And I looked next to the guy sitting next to me. A Chippendale dancer. I said, oh man, that's so unfair. I don't think what you do is that creepy. <laughs> there you go, Ichabod. Ichabod is back. Oh. Ichabod. Wait, so he drove up with Uncle Ron to picture, do your show? Picture him and Uncle Ron <laughs> in, a in the same car together. Uncle Ron doing bumps of coke every no, once in a while. <laughs> wow, thank you. A pumpkin head. It's a signed jack-o'-lantern from Ichabod. Thank you, Ichabod. He already has you know what? Watch this. This is how quickly you become part of history. Oh, the new bucket! Fast. The new Kill Tony bucket, signed by Ichabod. Just happened right here, live. Okay. Jeremiah. Yeah, I don't want to be critical, but that set needs a lot of work. You're going to need to bring it into the shop. We're going to take a look at it overnight. Uh, we might get it back to you in about three days with an analysis, but I'm not sure what's going on underneath the hood. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Ichabod, yeah. how was yeah. the drive from Vegas? Oh, it was torture driving with Uncle Ron. Did <laughs> <laughs> you have farter? What do you think, Ichabod? What was torture? Oh, just listening to him all, all the way down. He just wouldn't stop talking. Were you guys, were you guys <laughs> question, were you guys yeah. driving on the wrong side of the road? Only once. I told him not to go that way, but... Ichabod, what do you do for work? Uncle Ron's a dealer at Caesar's Palace. What do you do? Other uh, than dig graves. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta know if you call it a job, but I fuck dead bodies. <laughs> You have a job? Oh yeah, I get, well I'm on disability, but once a week I go, I leave the house and I get a job as a DJ at this open mic comedy thing. I 
play the intros and outros. And what does that pay a year? I get a free Coke. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Coke. A lot of Coke in the Ron Ichabod <laughs> dyad. They yeah. pay you in Coca-Cola? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're genuinely excited about that. You drink yeah, a lot of soda, Ichabod? Uh, sometimes two, yeah. <laughs> two? Went for each car. Wow. Wow. Did, you, uh, did you drive? No, I don't drive. Who no. drove? Ron drove? Yeah. Holy wow. fuck. Oh, Jesus. I, 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 Ichabod, uh, that's a sitcom right there. He doesn't drive, he just turns into a bat and flies <laughs> places. <laughs> Schulberg's in it. He's What's on the, the street. What's the most annoying thing that happened on the ride? Yeah, do you remember something he was specifically that he just wouldn't shut up about? That Uncle oh, Ron uh, kept bringing up? Uh, horses. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say about the horses? Oh, he, he won 600 on that one, 300 on that, and this damn lady told him about this, and he lost 800 on that. And this this and one's that. got a big cock. And we're bringing these other people to... Ichabod, no, it's like Vietnam for me. I don't I get flashbacks just thinking about this. Were you in Vietnam? Me, no. Uh, no, but Vegas. I rode with Ron, motherfucker. You're I from was Australia? There. No, Las Vegas. Oh, you're from yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. What do you do for fun in Las so, uh, Vegas? Oh, my God, Tony. Well, I don't Other than lure that. children. Uh, I'm trying to get into sports, so I go to this new thing, Las Vegas. I don't know exactly how legal this is, but it's Friday night gunfights. <laughs> and and uh, you, you sit behind a bulletproof window, and then they'll have, like, one-on-one -on -one or teams, and they shoot at each other. Do people they, get shot? Yeah, it's awesome. Or, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it, Wait, get, Saturday <laughs> night gunfights? Friday night gunfights. Friday night gunfights. Yeah. Gun yeah. <laughs> yeah, you moron. Of all wouldn't the, do of that all on Saturday night. <laughs> of all the things that got corrected, it's the day of the week. It's Friday night gunfights. <laughs> well, let me get I this mean, right. I mean, that does With sound kind of great, though. <laughs> so, so you're telling me that you use real guns, you stand behind bulletproof glass, and you yeah. shoot at each other? No, no he, he watches it. He watches it. them shoot at each other. Do, do people die? Not yet, no. <laughs> Oh, they. Does anybody He's win? He's like, but I'm hoping because I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been a mannequin for coffin displays? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, how long have you been the mascot for Spirit the Halloween store? <laughs> <laughs> you have an interesting laugh, Ichabod. Uh, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Uncle Ron at one point. I got a great answer out of him. Um, what's, something <laughs> what's something creepy about you that you sort of don't want other people to find out about? <laughs> Think about how many images are flashing through his head right now. <laughs> He's proud of it all. Stacy, why didn't you talk to me, Stacy? I could have saved you, but I had to end you. The devil told me so. Ooh, Friday night gunfights. Friday night. He, no, he, no, hey, no, he, he has no an answer. Shots. No gunshots. I got a Twitter direct message from Ichabod today. Oh, the last one. Uh, At 516. I got a Twitter direct message from Ichabod, yeah. at Ichabod Rocks, that says, Ron is driving crazy, but we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> On 210 to Pasadena. When should I arrive? Maybe right after 8? Now, <laughs> normally, I ignore every Twitter DM that I see. But when I saw this, I got so excited. This contextless? You didn't even know he was coming before this message? No. I did know he was coming a week ago. He said, the original DM said, a few weeks ago, Jeremiah said I should let you know if I'm going to the Kill Tony show. Ichabod saw Jeremiah live when he was headlining Las Vegas. Awesome. And so this message says, a few weeks ago, Jeremiah said I should let you know if I'm going to the Kill Tony show. I'll be there this next Monday. And so far, just you and my Uncle Ron know. Is he your, he's not really your uncle. Is no. he your real uncle? Are you guys Ron, related? Uh, no, I just said his name three times. 
Ichabod, is Uncle Ron really your uncle or you just call him Uncle Ron? Hey, shut up, lady. Hey, were you ever on that sitcom, Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Ichabod, I'm going to ask you this again. Is Uncle Ron actually your uncle or do you just call him Uncle Ron? No, yeah, he does. He's your he's, uncle? Yeah, he's uh, a uh, <laughs> father's brother's son. Oh, Father's brother's Here son. Here we go. Yeah, that, that, How long have you been calling him Uncle Ron? About five, ten years now. Yeah, because wait, I, you, I you met him five years ago? No, I met him like ten. I don't know. Ten. We years. were in the My Marine Corps so together. When it comes to years. Like last Corpse. time I was here, you asked me if I played the guitar, and I totally forgot. Oh my God, I do play the guitar. I just totally forgot. You said no last time you were on. I asked you yeah. if you play guitar. Yeah, I, I said I should play guitar, and then on the way home, I'm like, Oh my God, I do play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait a second. When you play I, guitar, I, do they give you a can of Coca-Cola afterwards? No, usually a joint or something. Ooh. Wait, so are, 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 does, do you and Uncle Ron go to the same family reunions? Never. Okay. No. No, we actually met here in Las you can Vegas. You can go to And me. then after some We're not in Las Vegas. We... <laughs> Let me get back to these DMs for a second. After he yeah. said, we're on the 210 to Pasadena, I said, yes, come into the main room a bit after 8. Can't wait to get you up there, pal because I knew that I was going to bring up Ichabod on his own as a special guest at some point. I wasn't expecting to pull Uncle Ron out of the bucket. I was going to bring you up later. But then, after I said, come into the main room a bit after 8, that was at 5.19. At 7.02, I get another direct message from Ichabod. It says, Uncle Ron and Ichabod have arrived at 7. <laughs> All parked and are ready to come into the main room a bit after 8. Uncle Ron sign Ed the Comedian sheet and wonders how he can get a seat if it's sold out. The next message, there was one next message, the final message came after that, and it said, H-H-N-J-J. -J. That's it. That's the whole DM. What's that stand for? No idea. I, Halloween Horror cool. Night, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> These guys... Are on a Wait, I have one more question for Ichabod. Yeah. What kind of music do you play on, on your DJ set? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, rockabilly, psychabilly. It's all rock, backwards, though. Yeah, harder the rock. Uh, <laughs> the the I, I Primarily the Monster Mash, again and again and again. <laughs> and then I do an, a long explanation of what actually did happen to the Transylvanian Twist. <laughs> You said rockabilly, psychobilly. Yeah. Is everything ending? A Billy? little boy named Billy that I have locked in my basement. <laughs> it was a graveyard smash. Uh, say metal. it was a graveyard snatch. Heavy metal rock smash. and roll. We heard it. What was that, Natasha? He he was trying to get out heavy metal rock and roll. Yeah. A lot of the hard crazy stuff. It's I fun. It's yeah, I, 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 well, this place I DJ, it's open mic. I think it's one of the best in Las Vegas. And uh, I, I've heard rumors we would love to have you there. And they actually said, you know, we'll give you 100% of the door. You Tony's, Ooh, Tony's, Tony. Tony's one like, of the best uh, open micers in the business. He'd true. love to come. <laughs> it's true. And I've been looking for a place that will have You've been me looking for Vegas. an open mic so to go to. Doug right. Dan Hope was there just recently, did a special there. And oh, at that venue? Follow up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, they, did they pay uh, him actually, in Coca-Cola? Started as a joke, but I'm pretty sure Ichabod just booked me in Las Vegas. Uh, if Tug Stanhope shot a special there and you DJ, I guess I will. We pay you in baby teeth. <laughs> oh, God, this oh is so God, fun. Did I forget to tell you the name of the place? Yeah, say it. World famous dive bar in Las Vegas. That's called the World Famous Dive Bar? Yeah. Well, there you go. There's your plug. Did you have fun up here tonight? Oh, well, it's not my bar. I just DJ there. But well, <laughs> I, know, I know it's not your bar, but you still gave it a plug. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. It's like the time you forgot that you play guitar. Yeah, drive so. It was my plug. <laughs> uh, Ichabod, is there anything else you want to say? The mic is yours. It's one of the greatest moments of my life. I can't thank you enough. Wow. You know. There you go, Ichabod, ladies and gentlemen. One of our favorite guests ever on this show. You know him. You love him. 
There he goes, the great Ichabod, everybody. Kill Tony legend. Him and Uncle Ron drove here all the way from Las Vegas for this. Make some noise for Ichabod, guys. Tony, with, you're making dreams come true. It's crazy, right? I'm making zombies' dreams come true. I but love for Ichabod, school. there are only nightmares. <laughs> Going back to the bucket. You guys ready for more? All right, this looks like a brand new name. Put your hands together for Mia Mars. Thank you. Yesterday was Father's Day, so I was talking to my dad, and I said, Dad, I think I need a future. And he said, you should have thought of that before you went to art school in the middle of a recession. <laughs> then he said the most amazing thing to me. He said, don't worry, Mia, you like those nerdy boys. If they're nerdy, they'll be smart. If they're smart, they'll be rich. So you'll always have someone to take care of you. So either my dad thinks it's the 1800s, or he just advocated for me to be a gold digger. I'm not pretty enough to be a gold digger. I look like, I look more like a grave digger. I look more like a punk rock Betty Boop. I look like Peter Lore in drag. <laughs> I really don't like the way I look. I would sell my soul to the devil if he would make me more attractive, but I can't because apparently Jews don't have souls. <laughs> I know that's a groaner. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, Mia Mars. Cool, man. You know, it's the, it's the joke everybody wants to make. Yes. Yeah, uh, should we all should we all do it at the same time? <laughs> it's a, Ichabod's girlfriend. Yeah. Ichabod's daughter. Ichabod's daughter. Yeah, yeah it's a real father's show. Day. Yeah, exactly. You get the uncle. You get dad. <laughs> And Joel, Joel and I looked at each other with eye contact reunion. and started laughing the second she hit the stage. Moshe looked at me, he's like, hold on. <laughs> like you said trapped. you'd sell your soul to the devil, we have him here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dollar fifty. I think you look cool. Yeah, you're so cute. Oh my yeah. God, thank you so much. Yeah, I think you're onto that thing with the Jews not having souls, yeah. <laughs> There was somebody in the really audience understand. that was like, hadn't laughed at, at, at anything she said yet, and then she goes, Jews don't have souls. He's like, damn right! Now he was like, totally got on board. I'm looking in the general bald white person area over there, but I don't know. No. <laughs> um, I thought you were, yeah, you look great. Thank you. Uh, I think the comedy was, uh, but I thought you looked great. I thought, yeah. She had that grave digger joke. Yeah, that was a good one. I like the grave digger. Mia Mars, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, I'm supposed to say two years, but I'm... What do you mean, supposed to say? Okay. Um... <laughs> Sit back, Tony. It's going to yeah. be a long night. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ooh, yeah. I started doing improv when I ended up being an intern at the Laugh Factory, and Jamie made me go up on stage, and I've kind of been on and off ever since, but I've really only started getting my shit together two years ago. Did Jamie tell you you had to say two years? Uh, no, not him. <laughs> Someone else did? Yes. What did they mean say? You've been doing <laughs> it. You been that's, uh, that's how long I've been taking it seriously, so. You've that's been... how long I've been able to, like, get out of bed every day and do it. Okay. Let's clap for her. Yeah. She's doing I it. guess. I don't know, I guess. What are we clapping about? I don't know. <laughs> really Guess bad she got depression. out of bed? Yes! Do you she still rose out of casket. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, do you still work at the Laugh Factory? Um, I actually just put in my two weeks today. Wow. That's the biggest thing that, that's the biggest thing in comedy that you've ever done for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Aside from this. No, even uh, no, there's no bigger highlight in the world, I'd imagine, than putting in your two-week notice at the Laugh Factory. <laughs> What's it been like working for Jamie, one of the worst human beings on the planet? <laughs> Yikes. Oh, come just on. Kidding. Just said kidding. Tony. Said I'm Tony. Kidding. Someone never got passed at the Laugh Factory. Jesus. Actually, I did uh, a bunch of spots there last week, and I still hate the club. He, Mia. He's just mad about the hat thing. It's true. Wait, what's the hat thing? He told me to fucking pr talk about being from Ohio and wear a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's the connection between Ohio and cowboy hats? <laughs> he's, he's like, you know. That's you're like, like Jamie's idea. I believe it 100%. Buddy. Buddy, you're from Cleveland. There's a snake in my boot, Tony. 
Buddy Buddy, you're from Ohio. Talk classic, about it. Play it's into a classic, it. A classic cowboy hat, you know, Cleveland style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so Mia, that's you a good Jamie impression. <laughs> it actually really is. You are just do Jews. <laughs> <laughs> what ethnicity are you? Um. Okay, I'm half Egyptian Jew. I like it. Quarter Wh Ashkenazi Jew mm -hmm. and a quarter Welsh. Ooh, I don't like that part. Uh, uh, one of my ancestors is Captain Morgan. The pirate? Yeah, I do have a little bit of captain in me. Oh, <laughs> is that true? Yes. Is the real Captain yeah, Morgan? The real Captain Morgan. Wait, Captain Morgan was a Jew? No, he, he was part of the Welsh white side. Oh. Yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> hmm. One, one. <laughs> it's not Captain <laughs> Seymour. One could say that uh, being related to Captain Morgan rums in your family. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> But right. you want me to walk the whole plank? <laughs> Get out of here. I barely got out of bed this morning. Mia, you have braces. How long have you had them for? Uh, since November. You have braces? I do. Oh. She's young. Fuck yeah, it's hot. Six. Yeah, but you don't look it. Oh, really? You look young enough to be that dude's mom. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Your teeth seem straight to me. What are, what are the braces for? I don't know. It is an alignment issue, you know. It's all <laughs> out of whack. <laughs> wow. God damn it. They're definitely an affectation. Wait, they're an affectation? Uh, that means it's a... Fake. No. It just means it's a, like, a... Something to get attention. Yeah, something like, eh, I don't want to, but when I do smile, people see it. But that's okay. Yeah. That's you fine. incorrectly tried to explain the word affectation <laughs> to did, a room of people who knew what the word meant. Yeah, I thought I did. Apparently, I don't. <laughs> hmm. Mia, you put in your two weeks' notice at the Laugh Factory. What are you? How are you going to survive? Um, I play a lot of poker, actually. You what? I play poker. This is the most degenerate group of comedians. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? The grave robber, a horse betting man, a fucking professional <laughs> poker player. Corpse. You do that good at poker? Huh? You're that good at poker to where you, you're you going to do it for a living? I you, didn't do too well this weekend, but... Where do you go? The casino or private uh, games? Hollywood Park. Wow. You go right there, huh? Yeah, the United Nations of Inglewood. And do you wear that outfit? When yeah. You People overestimate me. They... I dress un like under, this every day. I walk in. I underestimate wait. you. No underestimate. See, yeah. I can't fucking talk. No, to but you. underestimating someone is an affectation. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk in there by yourself, and like, what's the most you've won in a night? A Malaysian child <laughs> <laughs> from my father, Heroin. Ichabod, who had one in his van. Uh, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. And what happened this weekend? How much did you lose? Uh, Three hundred. Mm. Hmm. Where'd you go wrong? Was there something you did in particular? I got drunk. Oh. Do you, do you have a boyfriend? A, a gambling man? No. All your time at the poker table was uh, Uncle Ron ever your dealer? Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta say, she feels like a comedian to yeah. me for some reason. Oh, wow, thank you. That's exactly what Jamie Masada told her. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. Oh, you feel like a comedian. Oh, oh wait, I can't. Oh. I'm having a hard time coming. Hold on. Oh. Put on this cowboy hat. Ah! Oh. This is a fun show. I like I, Moshe. This is what I like about Moshe Kesha right here. He got on to Tony about, you know, complaining about the club. And, but then Moshe does a jack-off uh, act out about, uh, you know, feeling up on comics and molesting them. And that's totally okay in his book. <laughs> That's what I like about Moshe Kesher right there. That's my boy Raw Dog Kesher right there. <laughs> RDK. I do, I do Raw Dog. I will say that. I will. I haven't worn a condom in. Oh, how long have we been married? Yeah, you don't wear condoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Let's just say he has a lot of horsepower. Oh, come on now. <laughs> All right, Mia. Was it everything you thought it would be? More. There you go, Mia Mars, everybody. On to the next one. On to the next one. She's on Twitter at Mia Effing Levi.
By the way, I don't know if I said it, but Ichabod on Twitter is Ichabod underscore rocks. So, <laughs> those Dress you. for less. I mean, is that his real name? Because it could not be more perfect. What, Ichabod? Ichabod. Ichabod like, rocks? No, uh, is his name Ichabod? His first oh. name is really his Ichabod. His parents were like, Ichabod. The, <laughs> one thing I forgot to say was that uh, the only other thing that, uh, the only other message that he sent was after that first one, he sent an emoji it's the sunglasses one. <laughs> Trademark Ichabod. I'm starting to realize he puts on his sunglasses right before he starts. Yes. He should have sent the skull. <laughs> they should do a podcast on the ride home. That's a really good idea. Yeah, uh, Ichabod, Ron, start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Call it Vampire Diaries. <laughs> And then on Friday night, shooting, whatever, that's the Vampire Weekend. Gunfight Fridays, yeah. Yeah, he watches people shoot at Ooh, he's standing right there. Look at him. It's like a bod lingering above. There he is. <laughs> oh, he just floats. Interesting. Yeah, it's too... <laughs> yeah. Networking. He's... <laughs> Put your hands together for Colin Da Vinci. <laughs> Okay, I know why all the dinosaurs went extinct. It's because uh, they used to breed nitric oxide as a bodybuilding supplement. It makes you fucking jacked at all times. So they used to eat all the trees, right? They were huge. They used to eat all the trees because all the trees release oxygen. So once the asteroid came, it killed them. Then all the trees overgrew and started making more oxygen. There's no more nitric oxide. Okay, do we have any expecting mothers here? Okay, so you should have your baby sleep on their stomach at all times. So, like, have them sleep on all fours so that they can carry their own body weight for, like, eight hours a night. And then your spine will get super huge and you'll be fucking jacked at all times. And that's why the Sphinx, the sphinx looks like it does because that's, like, a person who did that. They have, like, super crazy, like, long spine and, like, they can, like, they're super flexible and all this shit. They're super strong. And, uh... And I think the pyramids were built underwater. That's a good punchline wow. to end on. This could not be more incongruous, like how he looks. And I, I had no clue what you were saying. Hold on one second here. This is so you could throw the towel in here. <laughs> <laughs> Colin. Yo, heart of stone. Colin, you have been on this show twice before. I remember this because... Three times, right? This, you, is, well, this is the third, right? Yeah. Because I remember this because every time it's all about nitric oxide for some reason. It's absolutely unforgettable. You're looking <laughs> very sloppy tonight. Your shirt... I, I like mean, that shirt. Both, of, both of Uncle Ron's shirts that he's wearing are better than the one that you went with. Yeah. Yo, man. I don't know. I don't Yo, know. I, don't, I, like a, I, like a, I like a black comic that wears a tunic to a show. I'm yeah. into that. It's like a pirate it's Unusual shirt. choice. Oh, yeah. It's oh. Cap that's her great, 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 great uncle's shirt, Captain Morgan's. Oh, Do you have any history of mental illness in your family? Like with you? <laughs> no. Not uh, diagnosed. How about building pyramids? Uh, so what? All right. Oh, yeah, Ribbon. What's up with that shirt, dog? Oh, you're going to roast him on his outfit? No, I just want to look at it and make sure it's not... Oh, I get it. Oh, okay. yeah, he deserves All to get right. roasted right. on that. Uh, so, I thought... Colin, have you written any jokes? Every time it's always been a ramble about uh, the uh, nitric oxide, and it gets a big pop from the comedians that think you're pathetic. <laughs> but it doesn't connect with any audience members. I felt like schizophrenic. I yeah. wasn't thinking pathetic. Yeah. You know, sometimes... You. <laughs> you're welcome. Sometimes uh, whenever there's too much uh, nitrous in the system, it can put too much torque on the engine, which uh, causes motor function oh, yeah. problems. <laughs> All right. Who's your favorite comedian? Uh, well, uh, Karl Marx. Know. Usually, I just listen to like the podcast. Nostradamus. I don't listen, listen to like stand up. <laughs> like I listened to Lavender Hour for a while. Who? It was what? one of the first oh. podcasts that I had. Oh. 
with the. This is not. This is not bode oh. well, though. This is That's for the Uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, I just listen to like podcasts, not really stand up. You know what I'm saying? So Wait, maybe he's trying to do like a podcast thing when he's up yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Are Are you trying to get a message out when you say that stuff? Is oh that yeah, I'm trying to like send this out to the people so they'll like come back here and like help me out to build all this crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? No, oh, no, I guess I don't know right. what you're saying. But yeah, but um, he has a bunch of inventions that he invented. Would you like? Can you tell Moshe and Natasha some of your ideas? Okay, we got the two-sided tennis racket. Oh yeah, the one I didn't say last time. A <laughs> the golf club. A golf club that's completely straight, so it's more like a baseball bat. Like one of those. Wait a racket. second. Wait a second, Colin. Let me just remind you that there are only two-sided tennis rackets already. Every that's tennis. That's what racket. you think, man, because your point. You've been nitrous poisoned. It's a curved tennis racket, like a C, and then the handle comes Okay, it. tell us about the golf club. Okay, the golf club, so it's just completely straight, like a baseball bat. Because if it has, like, an elbow, you know how it goes down into the right or left? Yeah. Like, you don't punch somebody, like, you know what I'm saying? No, like yeah, the, I like do. Like a point of wow. leverage. Like, when you hit a golf ball, the, the shit You're the telling me, my friend, that you think all this yes, while, shut exactly. the fuck up. You're telling me. That you truly believe that this entire time that we've had the physics of golf clubs not exactly where it could be? Exactly. But you have it figured out. And it's Fuck just yeah. a fucking baseball bat. Exactly. All right. You're a good looking guy. You seem nice. I think, honestly, if I could just uh, give you a little feedback on your comedy, is just like find, find a doctor that you can talk to and get help. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You, you're a good. You seem like a sweet dude, and honestly, I think you, on, if you got balanced out, you'd be really happy. Yeah? It gets better. Yeah, as a mechanic. Now, last last time you were on the show, what was your name? Oh, Colin Phillips. What made you change it to Da Vinci since then? Oh, Ari Shafir called me Colin Da Vinci at the end of the last episode. So I was like, I'm taking that with me. Wow. I see you were wearing that shirt on the last episode as well. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped some names too. Huh? Well. All right, Colin. You've you've got really good bucket luck, and you got up again to talk about nitrous oxide. There he goes, Colin Da Vinci. Black Sponge on Twitter. Is this, is this one of the weirder episodes? Did you guys see that he threw the towel at me? Oh, he did. Oh, How fucking man. dare you! Wow. I'm gonna make this into a T-shirt he can wear next week. All right, cool. <laughs> Is he pro nitrous oxide, anti nitrous oxide? What was the thing about the baby? I think it had to do with nit not nitrous, but something, some other ver nitrate. Everything, everything. I can't really get a grasp of it at didn't all. Didn't he As say? Didn't he say last week he didn't even take nitrous? As right. a mechanic, uh, my diagnosis is he's got a screw loose. Um, <laughs> Ichabod, Ichabod left his uh, his tablet on stage. Oh no, Ichabod! Uh -oh. oh, here he comes. <laughs> There, yeah, and there's an external drive attached. Oh, wow, Ichabod. That's oh, a Sheikah slate. There, there, he, goes, there cool. he goes again, living his dreams. Ichabod, everybody. <laughs> Why don't we bring up our regular and then go back to the bucket again uh, afterwards? We have a regular on the show. She's the only person that doesn't get pulled out of the bucket. She writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds every single week. It's one of the toughest jobs in all of comedy. She does it in front of our millions of listeners every week. Put your hands together for her. Here she is again, the great Ali Makovsky. <laughs> Too much laughter at my appearance, sir. Um, I just got this haircut and it has changed my life. I just recently bought a 2003 Subaru Outback. So I'm just leaning into the look. All I need is a pair of cargo shorts and I am, you know, full les. Uh, I used to be, you know, pretty, pretty hot. Uh, my dad still thinks I'm like the young girl with like long hair. He introduces me and my sisters to his friends like a pimp. <laughs> he lines us up and is like, this is Brittany. She's the oldest. This is Courtney. She's the middle and she has fake blonde hair. This is Allie. Uh, she's a comedian. Don't worry about her. 
My mom does the same thing. My mom whores us out. She'll uh, show all of her friends pictures of my sisters and I to all of her friends who are just the employees of Verizon. Boom. Another new minute from Allie Mikofsky. It's very impressive always that you're able to do this week after week. Oh, God. Isn't it annoying, like, as a woman to shave your head, like, don't you have to talk about it all the time? Like, doesn't everyone comment on it? Um, people do comment on it a lot, but it's nice for this, Kill Tony, because it's like a quick joke that I can just be like, something? I'm like throwing spaghetti at the wall, you know? I was That's watching. cool. You should find a new haircut for each year of stand-up that you do, so you have like a different wacky <laughs> like haircut thing, you know? <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, like a, you do like a kind of weird side ponytail, and that'll be a nice joke or something yeah. like that. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Jeremiah Watkins. Hey, didn't I see Allie in that movie with Eddie Murphy, Golden Child? <laughs> wow. I, I don't never, get the reference, yeah, but a few other people did. did. Uh, four people will get it. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Allie. I got it. It makes sense. Joel Jimenez. I just, if you're leaning into the look, how many pairs of Birkenstocks do you have? Um, I was just looking through my joke book to find something, and I wrote down a note that said, I think if I get Birkenstocks, it will change my life. That's what's up. That's what's up. All but right, I moving haven't. on. Wow. Well, actually, I was thinking uh, cargo shorts and Subaru is a little bit too, uh, you know, on the nose, on the of, nose. of lesbian sure. thing. It's sure. like, it would be fun to be something like, I've given up eating, uh, uh, you know, the gluten altogether, and... I exclusively eat pussy now. Something like, you know, something more specific, you know. Some Hard twist. Yeah. Pussy and yeah. seeded breads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, most drives a Subaru, so he probably didn't like that. And I eat, pussy, I eat pussy like a fucking, right? How long have we been married? <laughs> <laughs> Allie, I love that shirt. How long have you been renting out U-Hauls? <laughs> How long have you been a bowling champion? <laughs> no, but Allie, honestly, when you had, when you were in 8 Mile and you had one shot... <laughs> You had one opportunity. Yes. <coughs> even three, one, even Uncle Ron doesn't miss his one chance to blow. Mm. That's a cocaine joke. <laughs> that was funny, though. You're, you're, you know, it's I think you're funny. unbelievable what you're doing. I just saw a great write-up of you in the Intero Bang. Yeah, that from was you nice. getting After your performance last week, Big J Okerson had you open up for him at the Hollywood yeah. Improv, and you got a real write-up. Yeah. Like a fucking, like the monster that you are. Great. We absolutely love the work that you do here every single week. I don't know what else to say without oh, being cool. too repetitive. No, it was awesome. That write-up was cool. It was like, and the young bald dude that opened up with Big J <laughs> slayed it. Oh, yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there she is with there another brand new minute. Yes, Joel Jimenez. I was going to say... Allie McCops. I was going to say, no uh, she's the American history next big thing. You know what I'm saying? I love it. For some reason, I didn't get that one either. American history's next stop model, you know. Yeah. You don't get it? Yeah, it's not really hitting hey, me. Skinheads have you, short right hair. Uh, Edward Furlong. American history's ex- I the almost, next American history. Well, next. everybody just. Well, everybody Close. just Google the movie Golden Child later. It deserves more. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast. Google it now. I pulled another name out of the bucket. This looks like a new name, but obviously people have been changing their names on this show lately. So who knows? Could be somebody we've seen before. Put your hands together for Jerome Tennyson. Here he comes. From deep in the back of the room. Right, what's going on, y'all? I'm a high school math teacher, so I'm enjoying them in summer right now. Uh, I remember we have like these drug sniffing dogs that come on campus, and when they come on campus, like sometimes they could come into the classrooms, and when they do, everybody has to leave the classroom, right? So the dogs came in my classroom, so we all leave. Students, teacher, and um, they leave backpacks and everything in there. Well, one of the dogs found weed in one of the students' backpacks. Right? And so, as a teacher, I get attached to some of my students, right? So I felt really bad, because I was the one that put the weed in his backpack. <laughs> and I think, like, the hardest part about that was, like, when the principal told me, was trying to act like, what? Jeffrey had weed in his backpack? Uh, that's it. 
<laughs> All right. more. Drum Tennyson. That was the best joke tonight. That you, was definitely the best joke tonight. I think. I mean, the other I the agree. Was good. I, I, I think he is one of the... Okie dokie, Brian. Thank you for that again for no reason. Um, yeah, Jerome, I think you are one of the top rising future comedians that looks exactly like future. <laughs> <laughs> Too much sauce. <laughs> He's so charming. The future is bright. <laughs> How long have you been teaching uh, high school math? This is my first year. I just finished my first year. You smell like pot. I smell like <laughs> Yeah, and I smoke pot continuously. I have pot almost in every pocket of mine. I'm a big pot oh, smoker. like cologne on or something. Really? Yeah. That, people that wasn't you? That wasn't no, me. No. Jesus, there's it like a wet night right now. You wear <laughs> weed <laughs> cologne? <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Jerome, how long have you been teaching high school? I just he just told you you're paying attention. He told I, you he smokes pot. Right. I am Tony alone. I, my, I just finished my first school year. Your first school year. Wow. What did you learn? Woo, a lot. Yeah. He's giving me so much material for sure. Oh man, students are crazy. Well it looks like I just gave you a perfect lead in then. <laughs> to some material. Like I remember like uh <laughs> Got to go right to it. I remember um, just making this up right now. Um, <laughs> oh, the old Uncle Ron. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the classic Uncle Ron. Old that Uncle cool, Ron actually, is because right. Because Uncle Ron had two dress shirts on, and you have, like, two T-shirts on. So that's there's some beautiful <laughs> synchronicity. That's cool. No, but you know what, though? Like, even though, like, teaching high school, like, I realize I have to pay attention to, like, all my students all the time. Because the last time I put my head down for a second, a fight broke out in the class. Ooh. And this is how the fight broke out. They were taking a test. So it was all quiet. And I put my head down for a second, and then all of a sudden I heard, World star. <laughs> yeah, basically, right? Schulberg. <laughs> Pretty much. All of a sudden what? I heard, hey, nigga, keep your eyes on your own, Scantron. <laughs> and then, like, the other student was like, nigga, ain't nobody copying you, dumbass nigga. And I was like, oh. And I looked up. I saw it was two Korean students. I was like, God. Oh, God. no. <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. I mean, These Asians that, are out here. You should yeah. keep doing stand-up. Are you getting up a lot? I am. I'm starting to get up a lot more. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Are you new to stand-up or you've been doing it a um, Yeah, I'm still fairly new. A little over a year. Oh, so good. you started stand-up at the same time as you started teaching high school math? Mm, just before, yeah. But about. You know what I like about him? He seems to understand what a punchline yeah. is. Yeah. Seems like that's clearly. been <laughs> yeah. a problem yeah. with some of your students. <laughs> I don't know if they're my students. They <laughs> sign up on a sheet of paper before. <laughs> it's all random luck. I, I mean, as you see, I got this bucket and today I had some from a. And I flipped a baby over, and then okay, time zone. And uh. <laughs> you think that's one of my students? <laughs> I what, even know uh, can you disciples. Say, can you say what city you teach in? You don't, uh, have, to, you don't have to. You don't. 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 Okay. Don't. 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 Don't do it. Yeah, because you want to keep using those students and keep telling mm -hmm. the stories. Yeah, but I think it'll be fine. I mean, I teach out towards Ontario. Towards Ontario. There you go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and uh, how long have you been uh, teaching school for? <laughs> <laughs> you have a girlfriend, Jerome? Yeah. Of course he has a girlfriend. <laughs> He's so cute. Wow. All right, all right, all right, all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah. over. No, you know what? I, I thought your set sucked. You don't have a future in this business. Man, the by the sound, <laughs> by the sounds oh. of things, this just went from being the honeymoon tour to the third person right? cuck tour. <laughs> Moshe, Moshe, it's okay. He only likes fat white women. Oh, oh Jesus, <laughs> Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah. You are a typical racist mechanic. <laughs> Very quick, though. No, quick no, no. His, uh, his Twitter is at Pog Woody. <laughs> All right, not <laughs> worth it. I like how the it's still the Joel Borg chant. Either way, it's a foghorn or the chant. You listen to it next I time. I think the foghorn means it didn't go well. <laughs> that's That's if it goes really good. That's if it doesn't go good. We have a little system for it. You're funny. Yeah, you're oh, funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're thank good. You. Yeah, you're good. good Where are you from? I'm from out here, L.A. Oh, L.A. all the way, huh? Yeah, but I, now I live just outside of L.A. What do you do for fun? Any hobbies or anything like that? Um, Other yeah, I like you know, like I like to ride dirt bikes, uh, go kart riding. Stuff wow. Like that. How Dirt? many uh, CCs on that dirt bike? You, uh, 
<laughs> not that I actually don't even have my dirt bike now. I just got rid of it a couple of months ago. Um, you just hang out at Speed dangerous. Zone. Hmm? You just hang out at oh. Speed Zone. <laughs> you know what? Forget it. I'm yeah, gonna shut up now. <laughs> no, I have my own go kart. I have Joe a go kart. I have my own go kart. Did you build it? No, I didn't. I bought it. That's crazy. You have a go, you have a go kart? What do you do with that? I just go like he so, goes. Yeah, I just go ride in the dirt. We're like, you wow. know, so like on if you go chores like river. Is that what they, is that what they mean when in rap songs when they say riding dirty? Then sometimes no. that might be what they mean. No. Sometimes they it's crash and it causes a lot of T pain. <laughs> Sometimes. Wait, do you like put the go kart in like a truck and go, or do you drive? Yeah, the yeah. I don't have a truck, but um, that's how I get it there though. Yeah, use wait, a wait, wait. French truck. Oh, or you, you borrow a truck? Yeah. Does it does it ever get stuck in the mud and you have to use two chains to pull it out? <laughs> <laughs> He's on the roll. We're the black guy, you know, with dress. So we got T Pain, Future, Two Chains. <laughs> all the guys. Call so I'm out. used to it. I'm used to it because, like, call hey, man, call me hey, like, all hey, the time. Hey, 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 guys, let's bring the tension down. It's one love, one heart. <laughs> let's yeah. get together and feel all right. I, I, agree, I agree with Moshe. Most That's deaf, good. most <laughs> deaf, most deaf. <laughs> you just asking us to give me some O? It's a Buster Rhymes joke. All right, cool. Jerome, is your girlfriend white? No, she's black. How long you been with her? Uh, we've been together now like five years. Wow. Wait, was long. the follow-up question going to be the same if she was white? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yo, yeah, yes, it was. Oh, okay. yeah. Where'd you guys meet? College. Where'd you go to college? UC Riverside. And you studied math. math and chemistry. So my degree's oh, in math applied chemistry. Yeah. Damn. It's so weird when you meet Well, anyway, let's like talk math. about hip-hop some more, man, because okay. yeah. that's how I feel like I connect with you. Uh, <laughs> Most black people I know don't even, they don't even say the word math properly. They call it math. <laughs> M-A-F. But I'm, I'm, some of the I'm greatest from an all black, black. I'm from an all black neighborhood, Natasha. That's interesting. Yeah. Some of the greatest mathematicians are black. Did you know that, Tony? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, all their people bills. start with one, two, three, and to the foe. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. He's, He's back. You got nothing for him. He's back all the way. Who are the great Who are the great black mathematicians? Well, one of them um, is a calculus one, and I forget I can't really pronounce his last name correctly, but it's like Michael Thun Thumalius or something like that. There's other great black magicians or uh, <laughs> <laughs> mathematicians. We all remember uh, Fat Albert Einstein. <laughs> I can't think of any other ones. I mean, no. <laughs> Hmm. Do you like? No, I'm fine. Just as long as y'all don't ask me to tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> do you like being a, a teacher? Oh. I do. Actually, I love it. Yeah, I do. I love it. You didn't. What grade? High school. So like most of my students right now, this past year, I was um my classes was um AP Calc. So most of my students were. Oh, you're like brilliant. Students. You're teaching AP Calculus mm -hmm. wow. on your first year. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're like crazy. you're too smart for this show. <laughs> go do go do coke for 45 years and come back. We'll talk to you then. <laughs> There he goes, Jerome Tennyson, everybody. His Kill Tony debut. He's on Twitter at Is That Oklahoma? Is That Oklahoma on Twitter, all one word. That's an interesting Twitter handle. He has a future in comedy. It's true. Absolutely true. That's, that's another future joke. Um, eh, something just doesn't feel right. Should we go to the bucket one last time, guys? All right, let's do it. One last one. I lost my grip. Okay, put your hands together for Justin Marchert. Here he comes. Tantric sex. Anybody into it? I recently had a date who was. It seems to be sex during which you do not touch. I'm not a fan. I do enjoy tantrum sex. Uh, tantrum sex is when I lay on the floor kicking and screaming until somebody has sex with me. Wah! It's very effective, especially in shopping malls. The same date told me I look like a cross between Keanu Reeves, I'll take it, and Woody from Toy Story. So I thought it was kind of a wash, 90 sex symbol, Keanu Reeves, definite wash. Um, my favorite new dating activity is the escape room. Anybody been to one? It's the hot new thing. You go and uh, 
solve puzzles and try to escape. They have different themes like the space station theme and the pirate ship theme. My favorite theme for a first date is, if you can break out of my trunk in less than an hour, I don't kill you. I don't get a lot of second dates. I play to win. I play to win. Okay. All right. Very believable set. Very believable. <laughs> Maybe that's his tag. I play to win. <laughs> Obviously, you're not playing to win Kill Tony tonight. Uh, <laughs> no, I liked it because it was like super down the middle, like club, dope, first joke, super, super generic second joke. Last joke, I, I rape and murder women. That's, <laughs> that's what I do for romance. That's, I am a murderer and rapist. I hadn't thought about the, the, the structure, but yeah, I need to... Yeah. <laughs> We yeah, consider that. Yeah, no, I'm great. You can't start with the rape murder joke. No. No. Speaking of structure, I really like that fancy shirt you're wearing. Oh, thank you, sir. You guys remember that shitty store the structure? structure? <laughs> it's yeah. like an old ass reference. It's still but, around. But somehow Golden Child got a bigger laugh. How do I not know that movie? Justin, what do you do for work? Classic I'm an film? animator. Animator. What are yeah. you working on? Anything we know? Um, well, I've got a show that. Can I, can I just plug my show? Um, it's called Fantasy Hospital at fantasyhospital.com. I mean, you can plug it, but anybody that heard your set isn't going to go watch more of what <laughs> oh. you're doing right now until you have a better set on this show. There's no He's really... got at least three dates that are going to be forced to watch him, so <laughs> they're going to Right, exactly. It. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, two and a half months. Two and a half months. You started here. You've lived here in L.A. for a long time? Yeah. How long? Uh, like 10 years. Where are you originally from? Chicago. How old are you? I'll be 30 Thursday. You'll be 30. You're only 30? Damn. You look older. <laughs> physically, you look older than that. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Why? No, physically, I am much older than you, but look physically much younger. Yeah. Interesting. But you're attractive. Awesome. That's the part that's fucking people up. You look You're old, but ha! Huh. His his car, his uh, animation's it. actually legit. It has like Pete Holmes in it, Jonah Ray, Will Wheaton, a bunch of people in there. Fantasy yeah. Hospital. There you. How'd you meet all those guys? Uh, I went to I went to their comedy shows and hang out, hung out afterwards, and you were like, them to be in it." Yeah. Oh, okay. So you were like, "I'll draw you." Exactly. We were just talking about how you look a little bit older than you are. You're 30 years old. Why do you think you look a little bit older than you are? Ooh. I don't know. Anything stressful ever in your life? He, he, probably, <laughs> he, he probably just doesn't have enough oil, you know what I mean? Like He's going to get more oil into the system, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, know, Jeremiah, you know, uh, go to the well. You know, 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 that joke needed a tune up. <laughs> we can fix it. I swear to God, you came after me, one of your own, Joel Berg? Okay, no, no, I, no, I love you, I love you. I... No, 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 I see how it is. Wow, I... the band having a little bit of turmoil. Uh, did you say oil? Did you say oil? <laughs> Justin, tell us something about you that would surprise us. Um, Not... Something that would surprise you? Yeah. Uh, I'm black. <laughs> uh, I've never had a headache. Is that surprising? Oh, oh. Hey. Cool. Really? Um, I get the hiccups almost every day. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> wow, wow, that's weird. My guess is that those two yeah. things are something connected. in common. Yeah, that's connected. <laughs> I I'm have so full-blown <laughs> AIDS. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm not so sure that's their weird qualities. But that's interesting. You never had a headache. No. Interesting. Uh, well, a couple of times I have, I had the flu. Uh, that I, I mean, I, like... Uh, uh, I had no, 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 I'm on his team. I, I support you. I mean, You're like, saying you've never had the phenomenon of just getting ahead. Right, like I had the flu, the flu within a few hours, so right. I knew it was coming on because like, twice in my life it happened, and I was like, oh, and then I was sick in bed for like five days. Just tell us how many miles you have on your car. <laughs> 36,000. When do those hiccups normally happen? Is there a certain time of the oh, day? After I eat. I eat too fast. <laughs> what are you, a fucking baby? Uh, <laughs> It'd be weird. Like, I wonder I if there's a way that you could not get the hiccups. I don't. I don't know. I eat too Jeez. fast. Sometimes I spit up all over my shirt. You know. <laughs> you find yourself uh, tired a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it might be an exhaust problem. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm, all right, well, Justin. Well, I mean, you've been doing it two and a half months at this. Hey, rate. what do you call a guy who masturbates in his car? Uh, a carburetor. What? No. <laughs> wow! <laughs> hey, what do you guy? What, what do you call two guys that both masturbate in their car? Ron and Ichabod on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Marcher, congratulations! You made it on Kill Tony. Thank you so much. There he goes, everybody. Justin Marcher. 
We did it. That's the show. How about that? You made it through Kill Tony. That's the entire episode. Tell us more about the honeymoon tour. Hey, we're coming to a town near you. Me and Natasha, we're doing stand-up, and then we do relationship advice. We'll bring couples up on stage and have fun with them just like Someone people Someone got married from it last year. That's right. We set a couple up, oh, and they got married. That is so fucking awesome. So singles, come on out. Yep. New July 19th, we're in New Orleans. Then we go to Atlanta, Miami. Cool. Then we go to Montreal, Boston, Philadelphia, New York City. Chicago, Milwaukee, we're coming to a theater oh, near like you. While mood. you all sat there being lazy, the amazing Ryan J. Ebelt drew this the entire time. All these prints are available at RyanJEbelt.com, including the official Kill Tony poster. TonyInchcliffe.com will get you tickets to uh, the Monster Energy Outbreak Tour the entire month of August. And MosheCasher.com will get you tickets to our tour. Go to both tours. Absolutely. You know what I'm excited about is my brand new Jeremiah Watkins t-shirt. The Watkins with the saxophone, that's available at jeremiahwalkins.com. Jeremiah, tell us other things. Yeah, you know, uh, just reach out to me on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up, and, uh, you know, I might hit you back with a message or something. Patty Reagan has a new album out called Bad Chad, which I absolutely love. Anything else, Patty Reagan? Eh, hey, forget about it. Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, everybody. He's on Twitter at Mostly Sorry. What else? I, I mean, every, people have been reaching out to me saying that they listen to the podcast while they work. It gets them through their day. It's nice to hear from you. I love you guys. Keep on uh, fucking listening. Happy to be here. We love you, Joel Berg, Jeremiah, Pat Reagan, Brian Ribbon. See you guys. Thank you, live audience. Have a good night. We'll see you on the front patio. <laughs> <laughs>